So in part two of this video, I'm going to show you how to adjust um, my the sub D so that this green curve, which will follow our sub D, echoes that faint red line over there. Um, so I'm going to go to perspective view. And the reason I'm doing this at the moment is I need to adjust the ends of this object downwards. And uh, in order to do that without duplicating a whole lot of work, I would like to get this object mirrored or um, not mirrored, reflected. So if you select this reflect sub the object and you click on the object, you can now select the ends of these items here. Uh, possibly a safer way to do this is to click on it, select the object, and then say, in this case, it would be um, the, the, it should be the Y axis, X axis, X axis, all right? And then make sure it reflects either one side or the other. In this case, it doesn't matter, but whichever side it reflects, um, that's the side you're gonna choose. Actually, it doesn't really matter. You'll see that the, the grayed outside is the side which will do, which will replicate whatever you do on the other side. So I'd like to select these edges, but I, I only want um, from this point, I'm holding the shift control button down to that point. So double click in these ones and then go across to the front view and watch as I drag, watch the green line. So I need to drag this down a little bit. So you can see the, gr the green line is, has in fact followed what I'm doing. And now it's looking closer and closer to that red line. But this might not be what I really want in real life. Let's see. So you can see it's given me kind of a, a really a wonky shape at the top. So that might mean that I need to do the same thing with this line. And in, in this one, we can do it in, in real time and just scale that down. So there are lots of tricks here to modeling this absolutely precisely. I don't want to get you to try and do all of those too much just to give you some basic modeling so all i want you to do is try and get sort of a fairly even curve across the top as you rotate your model all right so that's looking pretty good if you ask me i'm going to go to the front view and we can do some finer adjustments you can see now that um that my green line doesn't reflect that line anymore what we can do as well is we can get these horizontal lines to um, either rotate and be adjusted like this. Um, so this is fine. The problem with it at the moment is that if I go back to this view, um, I'd like that mirroring to hop to occur in the opposite direction. In other words, not across left to right, but from left not across front to back but from left to right so if you right click in the reflect sub sub the object it'll ask you which one do you want to disconnect select your your sub the object and then we're going to left click in this select that object and in this case it'll be the y axis and make sure that these um, reflect the side that you're going to change so I'm going to click the flip command. It must be on the left hand side and say enter. Let's go back to the front view. Um, and then I'm going to object select so or sub object select. And I'm going to rotate this a little bit. And then sub object select that one and then just drag these down a hair. And don't worry if the screen line sort of goes out of kilter. Um, see what happens when we do this so you can see the screen line is sort of slowly getting closer to what i want it to be so what the aim here is just to get these lines sort of lining up as far as um uh sort of perpendicular to the, the actual line. Don't worry too much about it. Um, let me just show you another trick. So I, I'd like to get the gumball to relocate to that top bit. If you double click on the waffle, you can just snap 
to that bit. Um, if you're in Rhino 7, you won't be able to double click in the waffle. Um, I'll have to show you another, another way of doing that. And then you can get that line there to orient to this by double clicking in the rotate and then just getting it to snap to that bit. And so now I can scale up and down around that point. So I'm trying to keep, I'm trying to keep this top point constant and get everything else to scale around it. Um, so let's do the same over here. So double click, snap to that point, double click, snap to this point, and then I can scale this up. Okay, that's looking closer. All right, so that's actually looking pretty good. Uh, I'm pretty much happy with that. Don't worry too much about what the screen line does if it's got two of them, um, just as long as it essentially follows the left hand side. I don't know if that makes sense to you. Let's just change, make that color a little bit brighter. Let's give it a nice red glow. Or maybe red is not the right color. Uh, no, all right. So that's good enough. Um, if, if you've got this far, well done. All right, now um, let's just make sure that this is reflected in both directions. So I'm going to remove my sub-D selection uh, symmetry and I'm going to do it again. And this time I'm going to go x-axis, uh, say OK, remove it. And then this time say y-axis, just flip that and say OK. So now I'm pretty certain that this is absolutely reflected in both directions. All right. And from here, I can use um, that curve to... So actually, that curve has been locked out. So I can use that curve there to slice away um, my shape. So I'm going to hide this one for now. Just say Control H. Um, Hmm. Right, if it were me, I'd want to adjust this, but because the video needs to be short, I'm not going to do that. Uh, so if I if I do this at the moment, uh, and, and I use this command, so this is a command we haven't used yet, trim command. If I slice away at my sub D, what I'm left with is, is um, in fact, actually that's a pretty nice shape, is a, if you have a look at the top, it's an open poly surface. So I've actually gotten rid of my sub D, I can no longer adjust this as a sub D. And because it says poly surfaces, that means that there's a whole lot of surfaces in here. So I can explode this. And you can see I've got all of these separate objects. Now that's not what I want at all. So I'm going to control Z back to this point. And I would like then to get a copy of this as a NURBS before I proceed to slice it up. So I'm going to go to surfaces. And I'm going to use this convert object to NURBS. Um, don't worry about the, the options. Just say yes. And so you should have two objects, one on top of the other. If I click in here, you'll see it says surface or sub D. Let's select the sub D and let's move it out the way by just clicking in here and typing in 100. Okay, so you need to make sure that you don't have any of the reflects on because if you try and move with reflect, you're going to get an error. So here's my my lovely um, poly, uh, not poly surface, the single surface. So you can see it's an open single surface at the top. Um, but it's kind of complex. It's got a lot of ISO curves. I want to simplify it. I'm going to use this command here, rebuild surface. Um, and you should get something like 13.8. That's okay. If it's degree three, that's perfect. Make sure you have delete input selected and retrim. So now I've got a much smoother, simpler surface, which is really good enough for what I'd like to do. And so now I'm going to use that that's, uh, curve and I'm going to slice this away, saying trim. And so that's what I'm left with. All right. So that is really absolutely perfect kind of surface. You can analyze this by going to 
using one of the commands I've dropped in here, uh, the ZBA analysis, that'll show you how smooth this is or not. Um, you can play with the um, with with that sort of thing, horizontal. All right, so I can see this is a really nice surface. And so the next thing I want to do is create uh, two other surfaces. I want to create the bottom surface, which is going to be a flat surface. And I also want to create um, a surface between them. Um, so at the moment, all of these things are on the sub V item. I would like to move this across to, to my surfaces command. And I'm going to make my surfaces layer. I'm going to make that active. I'm going to hide what happens on sub V. And then let's select. Oh, so that my curves needs to be visible. Let's go to the top view. In fact, uh, yeah, uh, let's hide this. So I'm going to I'm going to go to curves, and then I can hide that one there. Right. So my aim now is to create a kind of a an offset of this curve inwards, and to do that, I'm going to uh, mouse over the scale one D, hit the shift, and then the Alt button and then drag this down to roughly half the size. So that there is giving me a scaled down version of the outside one. Um, you can adjust this if you want. I, I like to just make sure that these items here um, don't, th that the sort of the outside bits of this item here are not outside of this one or too high. So that the way I've got it at the moment, that's perfect. That's fine. Um, right, so I can select this curve and I can make that into a, um, a surface from planar curve. So let's see what's happening in that view. Uh, right, so that object there, I'd like to be on change object layer. And then I'm going to make that visible. And there are my two surfaces. Let's just make those invisible. Uh, right, there are two other things you need to do, and then we're almost completed. So one is um, we need we're going to use this command here, which is the blend surface. Blend surface needs it needs to. Oh, let me explain. So I, I would like to get this surface here to give me a sort of a thickened version of it. And so I'm going to use this offset surface command. Um, and I can click on this and it, it'll ask me for an edge or, or a poly surface. So it's that one. And as I click, you can see the direction of this thing is going to be upwards and outwards. I'd like it to flip. So I'm going to say flip all. So a little trick in Rhino is that you'll always find the flips on the end, on the right hand ends, and always this distances on the left hand end. So I'm going to say flip all. And if you need to change the dis distance, um, I've got it at 4.5. I know that's going to work. You can click inside here and type 4.5. And then you say OK. All right, so that's giving me a closed surface. And um, I'm going to show you a little trick I didn't show you in class. I'm going to sub object select this edge to so double click on it. And I'm going to scale it out. Let's go to the top view. Uh, top view. I'm going to scale it out just a little bit. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to scale. And it's only only on sort of the top to bottom that I want to scale it out a little bit. That'll hopefully give us a slightly better um, blend surface. I'll show you in a moment what that does. All right, and then I don't want this inside surface. So I'm going to sub object, select it and delete it. Uh, so this is still a connected surface. And now I'm going to use this command. Um, so if you select the blend surface, and let's just see in front view, I want to confirm something. No, that looks right. Okay, what I, what I noticed straight away is that that surface there, that one there is way far away from this object in terms of the sketch. And I think what's happened uh, from what I can see 
is I've actually placed the sketch and all of the objects too far away. So I'm going to just unlock everything and show everything. And I'm going to select everything except that item. And I'm going to drag them down so that they line up a bit better. Okay, that's better. Yes, that's much better. So let's close this. Let's sort of hide that one. Uh, hide the images. Let's see, ah, that looks better. And then curves we can hide as well. So I'm in surfaces. Uh, that's my active one. You can leave. You can leave these um, visible if you want. I just find it easier to hide them. Then you don't have to worry about um, them getting in the way. So with this command activated you can select one set of surfaces now here it's it's crucial not crucial but it actually changes things as to where you select on the curve if i select in that place and then correspondingly on that place you'll see that i'm given um, a connection point which is on the sides now that's fine it's just that 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 curve there is going to control the sides rather than the front and i'd prefer it to control the front and the back rather than the side so I'm going to select near the center over here near the center over there oops okay so that's actually just shifted this back to where Rhino decides it wants it to be that's fine I can just move this along by clicking dragging clicking and those are in place and say okay and then I can control what happens to the surface here. You can see if I rotate this, that there's a little bit of a dip in here. It's not ideal. It's not 100% what I want. You can click in same height. That might change things or it might make it worse. And then you can also control these buttons here so that that, but don't, don't, don't go too extreme. What you've got to be careful is don't go in the right direction over here because what you're doing there, what you might be doing, I don't know, that's actually, it's this one here that's doing the wrong thing. Okay, so the top one. So it depends on how you've oriented this as to whether that brings the curve below the surface of this one. And you don't want it to do that. So that must be at least less than one. Okay, so you can control that. Um, it's not exactly what I want um, because I've got a big dip in at the at the base here it's a rather nasty dip so let's just yes that's much better yes okay so just for the sake of this exercise try and control this so that you get as smooth a shape as you can and say okay let's see what same height does um, it doesn't seem to be doing anything negative so I'm going to leave it as it is and as long as you've got this amount done you're, you're actually pretty much done. The only thing that remains is to flip the di direction of this. And then at the moment, you'll see that I've got one, two, three, and four surfaces. And I want to, I want to make them watertight. So I'm going to drag select and then go across to this command join. And don't worry about the the uh, the warnings and I would like to just check that this is a completely watertight surface so under surfaces I've got this little show edges tool which if I select on it if you have so if you say all edges or non-manifold edges um, you'll get different results so all edges will show you all the edges but what you want is naked edges you want to make sure that there are no naked edges and then make sure that you rotate your model just to see that there are no pink items. And if there are none, you have a watertight object and it's ready for export as an STP file. And if you've got this far, fantastic, well done. Thanks for watching.